Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and I have a pretty big announcement as you can see by the title on this video. Some of you might already know what it is since I did quite a bit of work during my live streams. In this video I'll check out what I've been working on, how I decided upon this game idea, what my plan is, and also importantly, my estimates, hopes and goals for this project. It's going to be really fun when the game is out to look back and see if my estimates were correct. And I will also talk about how I calculate the costs to figure out what I need to do in order for the game to be successful. But first, here's the quick announcement trailer. Alright, so as you can see, that is going to be my next Steam game, it's called Total War and Liberation. It's a game with tons of systems, it's open world, survival, crafting, automation, building, and it's all turn-based. Think something along the lines of XCOM, but mainly on a persistent open world, meaning there are no loading screens, no instant missions, so all of that coupled with some survival, crafting, building, and automation mechanics. And like I've mentioned so many times, nowadays in order for your games to be successful, you need to announce quickly and start gathering wishlists. So that's why I've been working on this for quite a while, but only now officially announce it, now that the Steam page is available. So go ahead, pause the video, click the link in the description, and add the game to your wishlist. Also hit the follow button if you want to make sure that you don't miss out any devlogs. Wishlists are the main way that the Steam algorithm helps you, more wishlists always increase your chance of success. So speaking to you as a game dev instructor, I'm teaching you to announce quickly and encourage your players to add the game to their wishlist. And now, speaking to you as a game dev myself, I am asking you to add my game to your wishlist. As to how this idea came about, in the beginning of the year, I thought to myself that I'd love to start working on my next Steam game in the second half of this year. My last game, Battle Royale Tycoon, came out all the way in 2019, which was ages ago. I really want to get back to working on a longer project. And earlier this year, I also spent 5 months building a complete turn-based strategy course. So after the course was done, I started thinking and quickly came upon the idea of why don't I take what I've built in the course and continue expanding upon it to make a proper game. I think this is also an excellent thing in terms of teaching, so you can see how you can take the knowledge that you gain from a course and build something unique on top of it. And of course I won't be posting regular devlogs as I build a game, so it will hopefully be very educational and entertaining to follow this journey until the final game. I will be talking about all of the systems that I build, making standalone tutorials on anything that I research for the game, and perhaps the most important part of all, talking about the marketing efforts. One of the most important videos that I've made on this channel is a video where I talk about the most important thing in game dev, definitely go watch that video if you haven't seen it. Basically the most important thing is marketing. Nowadays having a good game is not enough, you definitely need to promote the game, Steam won't do that job for you. And in terms of marketing, you can also make it easier or harder depending on the game idea that you choose. So I spent the last few months thinking about what I could build based on the course game, something that could do well in today's market. In thinking about that, thinking about how to find a unique hook for the game, I thought about a bunch of ideas. One video that I also encourage you to watch is by Ryan Clark on how to come up with good hooks. Basically to make a good hook, you need some uniqueness but also enough familiarity. It cannot be something completely unique, but it also cannot be something that brings nothing new. So first of all I started thinking something simple, so just something like XCOM with some zombies, just a wave defense game, very basic idea, nothing really unique, no unique hook. Then I thought why don't I try making something with some automation elements, making a turn based factory automation game would certainly be a unique idea, but I also wanted to keep some combat, some zombies. And then I also would very much like the idea of exploring how to make a huge open world with some building mechanics to allow the player to expand, make outposts and so on. So I was thinking about something like four different ideas and I was having trouble on how to add a specific hook to each of those. Until I suddenly thought, well why don't I make the hook simply the idea of combining a ton of genres, ton of systems. So that's exactly what I did. Right in the trailer and in the Steam description I mentioned the huge mix of genres along with all of the systems and all of the things you can do. That is the main hook of the game. Lots of interlocking systems which I hope is interesting enough to grab some attention. 
The game that I'm picturing in my head does look pretty fun to play, so I'm hoping I'll be able to build it all and make something really awesome. Again, back to talking to you as a game dev instructor. With regards to marketing, technically you can publish your Steam page with just 5 screenshots, you don't need a trailer, but having a proper video does greatly increase your conversion rate. So that is why I made sure to only publicly announce this project now that I have the trailer done and the Steam page ready. And back to being transparent, what you see in the trailer is essentially concept gameplay. I already have quite a lot of these systems working, but it's only using some very basic cubes and visuals, there's no polish whatsoever. So showcasing the game in its current state would really not look very good, despite the fact that mechanically it already plays quite well. Sometimes when I give people the advice to make your Steam page as fast as possible, one reply I get is they say they don't have much to show yet. That is indeed an issue, but again, remember the goal of the trailer, especially an announcement trailer, is to show the game idea, so feel free to use lots of smoke and mirrors. For example, Elder Scrolls 6 was announced something like 5 years ago with just a concept teaser. Now your game is probably not as hyped up as the next Elder Scrolls, so you do need to show a bit more, but the concept behind it is really the same. You can show a mock-up of what you intend to build rather than your actual prototype. Obviously, don't mislead people with something completely different, so don't make a trailer showcasing a game like GTA when you're building a turn-based strategy game. So do make sure you use smoke and mirrors, but do so based on the game design that you're trying to implement. In my case, I built a few scenes just for the trailer, so pretty much just set up the characters and environment, just some basic visuals, and then made some basic scripting to get it to do what I want to show. The goal with the trailer is meant to sell the idea of what the game will be like when it's finally released. So my advice to you is announce as quickly as possible with a nice concept or alpha trailer in order to start gathering wishlists. Also as to how I made the store page, the gifts, the trailer and so on, as you know I am not an artist so I made heavy use of assets. I'll probably make a dedicated video listing everything that I used, but you can see that I used lots of Cinti models, some nice post-processing effects including a really interesting shader. I used volumetric lights, some zombie animations and a bunch more stuff. Most of the assets I already had picked up in previous sales, so I really only had to spend about a hundred bucks on a few things. Then beyond that, for the logo, I contracted an artist from Fiverr, asked them to make a logo and I'm really happy with the result, I think it looks really great. The total price for that was just about 120 bucks. With all that together, I think the Steam page came out quite well. I guess we shall see if it is indeed good, I'll definitely let you know the wishlist numbers on the next level. Now for the really fun part, let's do some guesswork to come up with some estimates, hopes and goals. First one, time. Initially I wanted this to be a relatively quick project, launch it around February or March. But I'm also experienced enough to know that the first estimate is always wrong, always overly optimistic. And in terms of marketing nowadays, it's super important to participate in a Steam festival. There are usually three per year, one around February, one around June and one around October. So the plan in terms of time is participate in the June festival and launch the game in July. That means 9 months from now, which is definitely a very solid amount of time, especially since I already have so much working, so I do believe it is a realistic estimate. Although of course this is not going to be full time game development. I don't want to let this channel die, so I will be working on the game alongside making regular videos. And I'm also still considering whether I can find the time to make a quick multiplayer course and obviously keep updating my other courses. So it's not 9 months of full time game dev, but still I believe it should be a good amount of time to create the game that I can see in my head. The second super important goal is in terms of financial results. Like I've mentioned in several videos, one of my, let's say, superpower in terms of making it as a solo indie game developer is simply the fact that I live in Portugal, which is a relatively low cost of living country. That is really the main reason why I've managed to make a living with indie games for the past 10 years. Over here I can live a basic life with around 800 bucks a month. But nowadays I'm also doing a bit better than usual, I'm no longer a complete beginner game dev in the start of my career, so nowadays my goal isn't the absolute minimum, but rather a nice and comfortable 2000 per month. Meaning that if this game takes around 10 months to develop, then my target financial goal is around $20,000. But again, always remember the difference between gross and net revenue, the target is obviously in net revenue. I covered my sales numbers for my last Steam game in another video. And I also made a quick video explaining all of the math involved in converting from gross to net revenue. How much you keep after taking away chargebacks, refunds, steam cut and taxes. Using a very rough estimate, let's say net revenue is about 40% of gross revenue. So that means that in order to get 20,000 in net revenue, the game needs to make 50,000 in gross revenue. So now that I know what gross revenue I'd like to hit, the next thing is how many copies does the game need to sell to get to that amount. That's just some basic math, but it is dependent on the price for each copy. 
Usually the recommendation is that if you have a game that is well made, then you probably shouldn't go under $10. And on the other hand, unless you have a super high quality indie game, you shouldn't go above $20. Deciding on the price really depends on the final state of the game. What I see in my head is awesome and I do hope that I get there. If I do, I can definitely see the game being worth $20. But at the same time, one of the main things that players use to decide if a game is worth the money is the visual presentation, which is my weak point. So if I don't use the assets correctly, then the game might just look like it's worth just $10. Either way, I will only know which price I will decide on when I'm in the final stages of development. So for now, for this estimate, let's go with the number in the middle, so $15. At that price, in order to make 50,000 gross revenue means that I need to sell 3,333 copies. So let's round down and say 3,000 copies sold. Okay, so that's the target gross revenue and the target sales numbers. The next estimate is something that I mentioned time and time again, and that's because it's an excellent predictor of sales, which is of course wishlist. So let me take this time again to ask you if you haven't wishlisted the game yet, go ahead, pause the video, click the link and add to your wishlist. The more wishlists you have, the more Steam promotes your game. Even if the people wishlisting don't necessarily pick up the game at launch, more wishlists is usually always better. But of course, hopefully those wishlists will indeed convert into sales. The general conversion math is around 20% on week 1. If you're wondering where this number comes from, it's from two excellent game marketing sources that I covered in the marketing video. The newsletter Game Discover Co. and Chris Zukowski from How to Market Your Game. So the math is usually around 20% conversion on week 1, and then usually sales for year 1 are about 3-5 to five times week 1. So putting all of that together, Let's say the goal is 1,000 copies sold on week 1, which would mean 3 to 5,000 copies sold on year 1. With a 20% conversion rate, it means I need 5,000 wishlists. That sounds like a pretty achievable goal, although wishlists also have a sort of soft goal around 10,000. Around that amount is when you can finally get into the new and trending page, so that's usually the amount that you should have. And if I go with a higher price point, like 15 or $20, then the conversion will probably be lower than that 20%. So in terms of wishlists, let's aim for 10k wishlists. If I hit that, I should be able to get 1000 sales on week 1. Ok, so here are all the main goals. Launch the game in July of 2023. Launch with 10,000 wishlists. Have those wishlists convert into 1000 week 1 copies sold and 3000 year 1 copies sold. With that, it should hit $50,000 in gross revenue and $20,000 in net revenue, which would then equal around $2000 per month of development, which would be a pretty decent amount. Then let's also split this into three scenarios. So this one is the good scenario. Then half of all of these amounts would be the bare minimum scenario. So less than this would be pretty catastrophic and hitting this amount would be pretty much the absolute bare minimum. And double the good scenario would be the great scenario. Hitting this amount would be extremely good so I would be very happy if it gets to this point. Alright, so those are the goals with all of the numbers. It's going to be really fun to look back one year from now and see if I managed to hit them. If I can build the game that I can see inside my head, then I think I won't be able to hit the good or perhaps even the great scenario. Of course I won't be doing lots of devlogs, and I hope you'll join me on this journey taking a game from start to finish. Hopefully it will be entertaining and very educational to follow this journey, and hopefully the final game will be awesome and a great success. Alright, so once again, go ahead, add the game to your wishlist. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.